Hello and welcome back to Flute Tip of the Week. Today has been a big recording day as I'm doing a video audition for an orchestra and I thought that this would be a good time to talk about how to optimize a certain space in your home that you will have as your designated recording area. I'm going to talk about various things that will add to your video in terms of quality, lighting, and appearance even. Let's jump in. Have a go-to setup in your living space so that you know automatically where you need to put all of your equipment for audio and video recordings. It can often be uncomfortable for people to think about recording themselves. However, when you're doing lots of auditions that are around the globe, or when you decide to bring it on yourself and put yourself on YouTube every week, it is important to start getting to know your apartment or house so that you can use the space to the best of your ability. Today, we're going to focus on getting an ideal video quality. One of the first things that anyone is going to notice when they're watching a video is the picture quality. You want to make sure that you have something that is capable of doing 1080p or high definition, such as getting a good video camera. Amazingly, the technology has been around for quite a few years now, and so you're able to get high quality video equipment for not as much money nowadays. However, I do suggest that you pick a camera that you know you're going to be happy with for a number of years. This is an investment you're going to be making. It might seem awful to drop a lot of money on something that at first you're going to think maybe I'll use it once or twice a year. But if you're doing lots of orchestra auditions, posting to YouTube to increase your marketability, then you're going to need to invest in a product Product that is going to allow you to give a very good quality performance, not just in terms of your playing or your presentation, but your video quality, and this will greatly increase your viewership. If you're watching a video and it keeps going in and out of focus, or it is quite blurry on the whole, it's going to be a little bit hard on the eyes to watch for a long time. And when you're someone with a pair of glasses, we always want things to be a little bit easier. Next. One thing that is going to be majorly helpful for your video and picture quality is your lighting. There are going to be some areas in your home that do not have the best lighting. However, these might also be the places where you have the best space for audio and also the ideal distance between you and the camera. Unfortunately, this is where you're going to have to set up so that you're able to do something that will represent yourself in a good light. <laughs> To be able to fix lighting in poor lighted rooms, you can bring around various lamps from other areas in your apartment or house. I even saw someone use flashlights and tying them up so that they could create a kind of spotlight. In my apartment, I've got a lot of lights in the ceiling, which luckily I'm able to change in terms of tilting direction so that I'm able to point the light more in my area. But this is also not the greatest thing because some of them don't quite rotate in the right direction and it kind of results in a one area light that kind of looks like so that's why I have on my piano over here one of my lamps and then on the other side I have a floor lamp that is quite high so that I have lighting coming from the front as well as on top next let's talk about your backdrop as you can tell, this is not what my apartment normally looks like. Let me show you what I actually have behind this sheet. Behind here, I've got my television, I've got cabinets everywhere, and if I were recording with just that as my background, it would not look very appealing. And also, once in a while, the camera would focus on what's behind me rather than me being in the center of the picture. It took me a moment to think about what I could do to be able to fix this backdrop. And this is something that you could actually use in basically any home. You use an extra bed sheet. And the way I did this was by putting the edge of the sheet over the top of the cabinet and weighing it down with heavy books. So not only does this give me a clean backdrop for my video, but it also will help a bit with the zoom and the picture quality of your camera. Now let's talk about various noises or creaking sounds that might interfere with the audio. One thing I do, because I have 
a very creaky floor is I put a yoga mat down where I'm going to be standing so that it at least absorbs and spreads out a bit of the weight that I'm putting on it. I still try to keep relatively still while I'm playing, but at least this means I have a little bit more wiggle room before anything starts to creak particularly noticeably. One thing that's going to be very important, especially if you're doing auditions or pieces where you need to have the music in front of you, is the height of the music stand, the zoom of the camera, and where exactly you're going to be standing so that all of your flute is in the picture. I'm going to show you about where I will set things up. Luckily, I'm a relatively tall person. I've got my tripod on top of the table so that it gives a little bit more height, and this will allow me to have my stand at a comfortable height so that I don't need to look down to be able to see the music, and it also won't get in the way of the view or obstruct my sound. So as you can see here, you're still able to see all of me, but it's also high enough and angled enough that I'm able to use just my eyes to see the music, as opposed to having to lean over to be able to see what I'm doing. Another thing to note is when you set up with your flute, it's going to change the color balance with your camera. So I suggest having your flute up and holding it for a few seconds so that it can recalibrate and refocus before you start playing. If there are going to be noises outside of your apartment, or if the weather is very changeable, or if the light outside is interfering with the lighting you're trying to set up for your video, if you have curtains or blinds available to you, put these down. Because what it means is that as the day goes by, if you're doing a recording over the period of a day, over multiple hours, it means that the lighting isn't going to change as you work. Otherwise, it's gonna make it a bit difficult if you start in the middle of the day, and then you take a break, and then you play again at night, it's going to mean that you're going to have to figure something else out for lighting. So this is important to either work out in advance or immediately get control of by closing the blinds or bringing down the curtains. This next tip is basically just for the girls out there. Even if you're not used to using makeup on a day-to-day -day basis, like me, it's important to understand how lighting and video will change how you physically appear just based on color balance and also on the way the lighting hits you. While I'm not saying to go completely Cleopatra and looking as if you're about to go to a wedding or just be utterly fabulous. It's important to learn how to use your foundation, highlights, lowlights, and also being able to use eyeliner and mascara so that you bring attention to your eyes. The eyes are the windows of the performer. And also this will make it so that no matter the lighting, whether it's harsh or mellow, you don't just appear washed out. Finally, let's talk about your sound quality. It's important when you're buying your new camera for the video quality that you make sure that it has a good microphone as well, because this will allow you to use just the equipment that is on the camera rather than having to get external microphones and then trying to sync it up once you're editing. However, I do also recommend getting a very good USB microphone to connect directly into your computer. The reason why is because once in a while you're going to be wanting to record things just for fun or for practice purposes, but of course you're not going to get a very good audio representation of yourself if you're using the inbuilt microphone on any laptop or desktop. Now I, I know it's fairly obvious that I'm not sponsored, but I just want to clarify that I am not sponsored to represent any of these products that I may talk about, but the USB microphone that I personally use is the Yeti microphone by Blue. I got this a few years ago when I had to do a Skype audition, and I wanted to make sure that the audio quality would be good enough to represent myself for an audition panel. And now, I use it all the time. It means that I'm able to play for people across the pond when I want some extra ears on my audition pieces. I'm able to record things like my Flute Tip of the Week jingle. It's all my USB microphone. And gradually you become a lot more comfortable syncing up the audio and video. I definitely recommend having the audio for the camera playing at the same time as for your microphone so that you're able to hear it line up. Once in a while, if you're trying to get everything really, really in sync while you're editing, it may gradually phase out a little bit. And it's good to have the original audio so that you can just double check that it's going to be linked up perfectly with the video. So again, that tip was have a go-to recording setup in your home so that you know exactly where your equipment has to be for when you're doing audio or video recordings. 
Hope you find this week's tip helpful. Doing recorded auditions can be a very different experience from doing live auditions. I personally prefer live auditions. I feel it's a more accurate representation of people. But it is necessary in multiple points in a musician's life to set up in front of a camera and make sure that you're able to play through the screen and directly to the people watching. I'll see you all next week. Flute happy and record happy. been feeling a little bit nostalgic today and so I felt maybe of uh, showing you guys one of my early family photos. We were a silly group. That's our bird Mindy flying into my dad's head. My brother, sister, and I all swapped equipment. Back then I was a figure skater, my brother played hockey, and my sister was tennis. And my mom laughing at my dad for being attacked by a bird in the head. So all of this, the crazy and everything, everyone's